So I'll be talking about uh, what I'm calling the Republic's three educational treatises or Plato's three educational treatises uh, drawn from his Republic. And this is, um, I'll be looking at this specific objective, uh, identify different approaches to education presented in Plato's Republic, including Socrates' proposed educational system, the allegory of the cave, and Socrates' approach to educating his interlocutors. So Plato's Republic, uh, perhaps the original educational treatise and one of the most influential formative educational treatises ever written, um, but we find in the Republic not one, but three educational treatises, and each has had a significant formative impact on educational theory and practice over the centuries. Um, and to be clear, there aren't three formal treatises in the Republic, but these three ideas can be approached as separate treatises. And in fact, they have shaped and influenced educational thought in distinctive, separate ways along the lines of these three offerings. And these three are a proposed system of education, the allegory of the cave, and Socrates as a model teacher. So um, first talking about the proposed system of education, and um, we have Plato to thank for, uh, um, as the original, one of the original articulators of the idea of a system of education. And so the image that you see here, that is in thank thanks in part to uh, Plato's work here in Socrates, uh, articulation of this proposed education system. So uh, the Republic includes a proposed educational system to bring about the just society. Remember the, the um, plot of the Republic is to try to articulate what justice is, to define justice. And in order to define justice, it, instead of looking at an individual, Plato will, or Socrates, Plato through Socrates will say, well, let's look at justice on a bigger scale. Let's look at it in a republic and see what it looks like there and then see if we can apply that to an individual. So as part of that explanation, um, the republic includes this proposed educational system that is going to bring about the just society. And the system is characterized by deep concern that we efficiently sort people into appropriate educational tracks for the work that they will do for the society. So there's a ruler track, there's an auxiliary track, and there's a craftsperson track. Um, and to waste time training what will be a craftsman as a ruler is wasteful and shortchanges both the future ruler and the future craftsman on that training that will more efficiently bring about excellence in their contributions to the good of the society. The proposed system is highly coordinated and well and well developed to address broad social needs and to bring about an improved social structure. Um, but just society or the just society, justice in a society for Plato means sorted people stay doing the tasks that they have been assigned and don't venture outside of those tasks. Um, and again, this is to make a model for what justice will look like for an individual. So his educational system is coordinated. Um, it's tracked, uh, has different educational tracks for different people in the society, depending on what they will, what their role is for the society. And then the Republic also includes the remarkable allegory of the cave. In many ways, the default model for liberal learning, where we see the journey of learning as a culminating quest to question apparent phenomena and to seek deeper, more legitimate justification uh, for the apparent world. In the allegory of the cave, we see lifelong inhabitants of a cave who mistake shadows or of representations of objects for the real things. Um, so that's how it starts. And then they turn to journey out of the cave to confront actual objects from which their cave life perceptions were representative and derivative. And the turning of the soul 
toward the sun, which is, that's the whole work of what happens to these people in the cave. It's the turning of the soul toward the sun, ultimately uh, to see the sun. And during it, journeying out of the cave and from ignorant bondage um, is perhaps the most influential and lasting allegory uh, of, for an individual's need for and process of education. So that's treatise number two, the allegory of the cave, which even though it's just a part of the Republic has come to kind of stand on its own as its own treatise for education. And finally, the Republic includes the character Socrates, that curious teacher whom educational scholarship um, and not to mention many other fields in history reveres and with whom it has wrestled since his arrival on the scene back millennia. So Socrates remains perhaps the most lasting model for teaching where the teacher's role is not to simply lecture or impart answers, but to pose questions and challenges to a student's pronounced beliefs uh, or knowledge, and so to facilitate the student's moral and intellectual development. So while the Republic remains one of the few treatises where Socrates provides a substantive answer to the question, often he doesn't provide an answer. He just uh, demonstrates that his interlocutors don't know what they're talking about. Um, but in the Republic, he does provide a substantive answer to what is justice. Um, so while it remains one of the few treatises where he does provide this substantive answer, um, the dialectic remains central. Um, it's always in response to, um, you know, this conversation he's having with um, his interlocutors, and that, uh, and it's that dialogue that sets the stage for his substantive response. Um, so, those the, those the, though these three models are juxtaposed in the Republic, they aren't really integrated. Socrates is the ultimate maverick teacher, and to situate Socrates in an institution or, or an overall project of schooling is to mischaracterize him on a, on a really essential level. In fact, his indictment in another work in the Apology could easily be conceived as a charge that he was departing from and thwarting the efforts of the school system or some sort of schooling system or conventional social ways of bringing up youth. Um, and likewise, in the unfolding of the educational system, the allegory of the cave is really only applicable to a tiny portion of that population, to the rulers uh, on its proposed route toward a just society. It's not the case that within this proposed system, Plato argues for an integrated account that captures highly coordinated, efficient effort at providing an appropriate education for all members of society. So that's kind of what the system is. It's trying to do this. Um, that seem, seamlessly, it doesn't seamlessly articulate the goods of liberal learning, and it doesn't model a kind of Socratic teaching that is at the core of such educative activity. So there's the system, but the allegory doesn't really fit in the system for everyone, and Socrates as a model teacher doesn't really fit um, in the allegory or the system uh, in a really seamless way. Uh, so instead of one account, we have three, and the bulk of the teaching in the proposed system is more for training than teaching. Um, and different citizens are given an education that suits them, but it's more appropriate really to think of it as training. Um, because especially if we think of education as a sort of liberal education that um, the allegory of the cave is um, a lasting allegory for. Um, so different citizens are, giving, are given an education or training that suits them because of the type of work that they will do in the eventual republic, and they are trained accordingly. The education is justified in terms of societal aims and goods, what will make training citizens for their contribution to the aimed at society. Uh, and the journey to leave the cave is an abrupt departure from that training which training, if we were to transpose the system onto the allegory, um, the training would be in preparation for the characteristic activities of the lifelong cave inhabitants. 
Uh, so the journey to leave the cave is an inquiry into levels of justification for the supposed facts and accounts of life in the cave. And as Socrates points out, one who has made such a journey may perform worse in the activities conducted within the cave. Uh, in other words, such a journey may be counterproductive to efficient work in the cave. And it's not clear how Socrates' approach to teaching would fit in either, though he seems a more appropriate fit in the allegory, though this too is strange that Socrates can only fit transposed onto the allegory or on a very limited scale and only with, remember the allegory is really only um, applicable to the rulers um, for the society, for the educational system. Uh, so those who have made the journey out of the cave may return and help others, but there is no model within the allegory for doing so unless we take Socrates' approach to be just such a model. But this is adopting a narration. Uh, remember, it's Socrates giving this narration, adopting the narration as the sole model for the work alluded to in the narrated allegory, which is, seems to be a very complicated literary device. Um, if if indeed that is uh, the approach that uh, Plato's invoking here. So mean, and meanwhile, Socrates remains this curious figure. He's the lone model for teaching in the sense detailed by scholars today articulating the particular goods of teaching, even as he articulates a highly developed proposal for a system of education. So the model for teaching is to be found in this character explicitly outside mm -hmm. of the system or allegory. So kind of convoluted way to, to say that here are these three treatises, they're not really integrated, they're juxtaposed, we can see all three, um, but they don't tell one single uh, seamless story. And um, so while Plato makes, seems to make no effort, I can't really um, identify an effort uh, on Plato's part to integrate these three treatises each has been and continues to be a pillar in educational theory and practice. And we can return to each again and again to think through perhaps the most central questions in education. Uh, the system, the proposed system challenges us to ask, do or how do schools and school systems embody and bring about our aimed at society? This gets at how we schedule and structure learning and curriculum, how we coordinate or don't. Um, and we can see a lot of questions and challenges and critiques of school today is just about that. Um, uh, and also how our educational efforts shape our society. Uh, the allegory challenges us to ask, what is the individual work of education? Does or how does education serve the student? Um, and Socrates as the teacher challenges us to ask, what is the work of teaching? And if we think of teaching as driven by prepared lectures, oblivious to the actual students, Socrates will challenge this um, in an essential way. So those are, um, that's kind of a, a summary of those different approaches to education in the Republic. Uh, we get the proposed system of education, highly coordinated, um, uh, focused on uh, sorting, students and having students take different tracks of education depending on what their role will be in the aimed at society. We have the allegory of the cave, the default model of liberal learning where we see an individual who has been, or the, the narrative is someone who's been a lifelong cave dweller, um, as, as, um, takes shadows of puppets for the actual thing and then there's a turning of the soul where this individual ultimately leaves the cave to behold the sun and behold what gave justification and legitimacy to any, all of um, the person's experiences in the cave and what happens when that individual goes back to the cave uh, and may not be um, celebrated by the other people who have remained in the cave. And then there's Socrates, who's this um, maverick teacher who uh, is in constant dialogue with his interlocutors and 
what he teaches is in response to the questions and the understanding that he perceives um, the students to have. So those three treatises, uh, each on its own has um, kind of stood the test of time and has influenced uh, educational theory and practice since the writing of the Republic. And um, anyway, those are three very powerful approaches to education articulated in the Republic. <laughs>